in one of these uh, little intro things, maybe not against Terran as much. Yeah, I don't think it's... For ZVP, I think it's pretty good. I think mm. for ZVT, it's a little bit uh, Terran favorite. So maybe like best of five kind of territory, but best of three. There's better ones. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was a bit surprised, you know, with the 2 on one that Mario did the first game on Curious Minds? I was a yep. bit surprised they didn't do more of the tank stuff early on with this 2 on one Because I yeah. feel it's a really good map for it. Yeah, I actually thought it was absolutely going to be like aggression into tank push after tank push. We kick it off in the bottom left-hand side. Deciding map, how Blue Terran from Team NV is Maru. And spawning over in the top right, Ensor Serral. I'm almost expecting Serral to go for a 16 pool here, just because he, he could be thinking, oh, after a game like that, but not going to go for it. No game in the series did Serral go for a pool first, which isn't weird, but he has done it before where he feels very comfortable against Terrans, and it's usually he usually does it exactly when they 2-rex as well, and Maru's one of the most famous for it. CC first, Wardy. Well, different from Maru, changing it up already. The CC first has had some fun variations from it as well. And Maru was even one of the players who popularized kind of CC first two on ones as well, right? Or three racks. And just getting very aggressive off a very, very quick, strong economy. So, yeah, already kind of questioning what Maru might get up to next. And I find that kind of fun. So we'll see what we get up to. But now racks, then the gas. No surprises there. And so we'll hatch gas pulling it up to get us started on 2000 atmospheres. I like it when you see Maru lift up his little uh, mouse towel thing. Just. It reminds me that he plays with a towel literally on his mouse, and he still micros as well as he does. Wardy, I forget how to hold a mouse even without a towel on it. <laughs> like, you know, all the time, literally all the time. I, I'm kind of wondering, because CC first is really good against the 16 pool kind of thing. Like, the Zerg just tends to be quite behind. Yep. I wonder if he was thinking that his opponent was going to do that, thinking he was going to two racks, you know, like proxy two racks. Yeah, no, it's it's a real possibility, right? And even if not, it puts you in a pretty great position. There are very few things that, like, really stop you going CC first. Like, if you do it way too predictably, okay, like, his fast roaches are going to be pretty bad to deal with. But, I mean, this scenario, he's going to be completely fine with it as well. Doesn't matter that Serral maybe didn't 16 pool or whatever. And Serral will take the forward third hatchery here. And Maru already on his way to a reactor, second barracks finishing. Well on our way to this 2 one one Yeah, it's always annoying because the Zerg... If you open up hatch first, you always have to make the four Zerglings. I know some people might be like, oh, why do you make the Zerglings? Nothing's coming. Well, you have to. Like, those Zerglings have to be halfway in production kind of thing by the time the Reaper arrives or, you know, otherwise you're just going to be taking way too much damage. So you have to, you have to. He's going to be utilizing these Zerglings now just to scout around a little bit after a Reaper hasn't turned up. But he's already going to know something is a little amiss here and we'll get the confirmation that's a very quick CC. Yep, seeing that already morphed into an orbital, Serral will know the situation. He obviously uh, got to pick up the ramp there as well, so he gets to see that is double racks. Tech Lab were in a way, and Serral probably a bit kind of reminiscent of what happened back in that first game. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, cheekier situation though, obviously, for Maru. Didn't even get Reaper, so that's big. Gets the CC first, so economically he's better. A lot better, actually. I wonder... Given that this map was in the previous pool as well, it's a bit more played out, right? Like, people know it better. I wonder if he's got anything super cutesy planned here. Yeah, no, it's very possible, right? Because it is just kind of, you're very aware of this map. You know exactly how it plays. You've played on it a lot. Definitely possible. But at the same time, maybe it's also one of those situations where it's like, how many more things can you do that Serral hasn't seen before? That's true, that's true. I'm just, I'm just... I'm really feeling these tanks, Wardy. Like, the, the yeah. way that he utilizes them. Even on Hardwire there, that random tank on the far left picking off the extractors. It was great. Yeah, and it, you have to deal with it. Like, you have to. And you know what I love? Maru was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm, I'm gonna not so sure about these new maps. So I'm gonna see how the other Terrans are playing. And he comes up with the most creative Terran stuff we've seen on them so far. Yeah, I've Maru, I don't buy you on that one. Yeah. Like, I, I really don't, because you're the guy I look to. Oh, not doing the switch. Uh, he wants to fake it, right? Then he actually is gonna switch. I think so. Yeah, you're totally right here. So right now, trying to make Serral think that he's going for a bit of a Hellbat push here, but he's not. He's too cheeky. Yeah, just uh, Serral just going to be uh, getting his Bane Nest up anyway. It was already on the way, right? So he's already being safe. Now the third CC goes down from Mara in the main, so he can float straight down to that low ground pretty much straight afterwards. 
And combat shield coming up as our first widow mine coming through alongside these first few medivacs. I mean, with this CC first, you have a lot of marines ready to go. So you're going to have a lot of power right away. And in a way, that's kind of why you need this being this. Because if you don't, like, Ling Queen gets overwhelmed very quickly against this timing. It certainly does, certainly does. It's going to be a very similar follow-up to game one with the Widowmine afterwards, along with the Marines. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to whip out two more medevacs, not just one, but Serral having very good vision across the center of the map, by the way. Like, he wouldn't have missed anything coming out of Maru's base here and even getting a spine crawler just for safety, because in Serral's head, if you go up against, like, a two-on-one, as long as you don't take too much damage, you technically should be ahead. Yep, absolutely. As we're going to go jumping up into the main base, though, Serral has units in position. He knows Maru's tricks. He isn't going to fall for it at all. He's absolutely fine to just shut that down, push it back. As an armory comes through in this medevac, he's going to start heading across the map here from Maru as well. So another medevac coming through as our Marines will scan, and this creep spread will start to take some hits. So a little bit of creep going down already, and obviously just now happy to take away some of Serral's map control and lean into the future. This little squad is scary, though. Like, what is it? Yeah. Maybe 22 Marines and a Widow Mind. Like, that's a lot of damage and quite a lot of healing, too. Like, Serral has to respect this, and you start to feel a little bit claustrophobic when all this creep spread's getting cleared up as well. Yep, you can't really see anything. You don't know where this army's coming from next. As we do move up this ramp, Fanlings are around. You just don't really want to commit into this fight because you know they're just going to get targeted down. So just rather keep those alive for bane speed unless it is at all cost. You must use them. Hydroden coming down as well for Serral as we see where he's going to take this. His Overseer here is going to go down too. Was not moving that manually at all. So that's a loss. As otherwise, Maru's still pressing up. I mean, he's getting rid of so much creep with all of this. He certainly is. I've noticed this. I was saying this about Cure as well. Like, so much of their energy, their orbital energy, it's not used for just mules. Like, I, I'd say, like, a good three-to-one ratio of scans instead of mules kind of thing at this stage of the game. And it makes total sense. Because then your Zerg opponent doesn't feel safe at all. Oh, nice snipe on that uh, Overseer there. Oh, he got a bit forward there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. That second uh, Overseer showing up as well, so the Widowmine still got targeted down. Uh, that was uh, a nice little combination of plays from both there. Just having the second Overseer. Mara trying to play around the fact that he got rid of the first one. He is going to start setting Widowmine drops up now that Drilling Claws is done. So that's something you've got to be on top of as well. You can't possibly let that get out of reach or get out of control because that's how you start losing games very quickly. Widowmine is looking to get into the corners here and Cyril has no choice but to back away and to minimize the damage. He's taking the Lings, taking a couple of shots. This Medivac's about to go down though. He does get the mines out. Cyril dealing with this well though. He's going to kill one more mine here. And that other widow mine forgot to burrow, and it is dead. So really not that bad. And the Banes get four CVs, and two of them get to run away. I actually don't know how Maru. Oh no! Oh, I was about to say I don't know how Maru does this because even when other players aren't doing things like widow mine dropping in two places at once, they still lose all their SVs to a Baneling run by. Whereas he, sorry, it was actually quick enough to deal with that as well. But good bit of tit for tat on both sides. Yeah, fun back and forth so far. Definitely like it for Serral cleaning up a couple of those drops just very effectively. That medevac that didn't get to unload at all. I mean, that's exactly what you want. The more you minimize the damage here, the better of a position you're putting yourself into. Absolutely, absolutely. And he's kind of survived the scary stage of Serral because now he's getting Hydras onto the field as well. They'll be able to deal with the Widowmine stuff quite a bit better as well. These Widowmines, juicy hit. Yep, second one on the Overseer at least, so... Five drones, the medevac still around there as well. That might get cleaned up further down the line. There are 10 hydras taken to the stage as well, so that hydra count increasing. As we do just see more of these drops of Maru setting up and trying to figure out where they want to go. Serral already has another run by somewhat set up. There's that medevac going down, as we previously mentioned. Infestation pit coming through with the 2 2 upgrades. Obviously, Maru on an upgrade lead. Not sure if he's going to have enough freedom to really make much of that, though. Yeah, it's not much of a window. He is up to eight barracks already. We can't forget that, which. You know, that means he can pump out a lot of bio very, very quickly. But Serral's done, he's just done a good job. Because even though we talked about how much Maru was suffocating him with the creep and stuff, it's still pretty damn good. It's getting to halfway across the map now, and he's fighting for map control as well, constantly spreading creep, and yeah, very nicely played by the Finn. Yeah, absolutely. Medivac loads up a few of those Woodle Mines, another one burrowing up just out the front as well. Our Ling Bane Hydra Force just out of reach of it, is going to get it to set off, and obviously that can be a cleanup. Now, here comes a drop to the top side. Some Ling's already here. 
These medivacs are gonna go diving even deeper. There are no units in the natural expansions of Serral. Well, he is set up onto this attack still, but now he's gonna have to deal with this somewhat properly. He's taking damage from the Widow Mines and just a combination oh. of attacks from Maru. Nine drones, a few units having to be used. He's not quite chased down those Widow Mines yet. And Maru's still trying to find a little bit more as that slow HP medivac is the one to drop back in. Maru's playing fast, but also crazy. Like, normally when you're playing this kind of way, like a bit risky, a bit gambly, um, it's usually because you feel you need to. Like, uh -huh. we see that he doesn't need to, but maybe just fear in the fact that he hasn't done enough to sell to really slow him down. Oish. I wouldn't mind really reach for that connection as he's having trouble getting these couple of medivacs anywhere else now, and several definitely seems to have those well under control. He's going to continue to chase around wherever they might drop next. And he's been pretty persistent on holding this watchtower, so he really wants to maybe try and make something from this position. Or at least Oi. just stop a large army from coming through. The Medivax just flying into a spawn of Queen. That ain't so pretty. And Maru losing a few units. That was a Benny F2 right there, I do <laughs> believe. Okay, more CC is coming down for Maru. He's going for the late game and yet again. But that's mainly just because Serral just won't die. And here, a little bit of a weird engagement. Serral hold positioning, just making sure that he doesn't blow up to any of these Widow Mines. Hive almost finishing as well, but 3-3 on the way for Maru. Yeah, obviously Serral just wants to slowly make his way into those lurkers as these medivacs have to get out of there once again, lifting up and evacuating. With Hive done, obviously a couple of Vipers would be really nice here, something to abduct those medivacs back a little bit, or some parasitic bombs. Oh. Obviously they have other uses as well. That's a good Widow Mine, at least getting a lot of lings. And Serral, I don't think we're going up this little tiny ground. Certainly not. You know, like, even though... I, I do think it is a really good skill. Like the fact that, in fact, it's just good. The fact that we're not seeing these Banelings connect with any of these units properly, they're always getting picked up. That is such a nuisance for Serral because he's never really been able to deal with either side, really, these little armies of Maru. Mm -hmm. Additional Banes coming through, backing up a little bit. We're going to turn back around into this Bioforce. Banes crash in. Widowmine on the Overseer. Widowmine on the Overseer again. Maru getting destroyed in this little fight. Top left, there is this drop unloading, but the Queens can reach from there to some extent. Only one of them can. And he's putting some damage out and is going to protect this base. That's the important thing to note. Like that little sequence of events from Serral, who is now getting into Lurkers. And Maru just doesn't really have the preparation that he's had in previous games for Lurkers. No, he doesn't. Serral's been really good this game. I, I mean, he's still lost maybe like 20 drones throughout the game, but... Mm -hmm. He just bounces back, man. He's like a real cockroach. Like, he just won't die or take damage. And now, Adrenal Glans finishing, Vipe is finishing. I don't know how many lurks he morphed, but... It's 10 or so. Yeah, yeah, that's already a ridiculously scary number. Like, if their armies fight right now, like, Serral's army's just way better, man. Like, what does... <laughs> so, the things that Maro has to do right now is buy time, try and kill him in other ways, but... Serral's just, just bum-rushing him, man. He's just going to run straight up. He knows his army is very good. And even going up this ramp, it's not super pretty, but then the bio army does kind of choke up, running towards it a little bit, I suppose. The Banes turn around into this as well, and they will start to connect. This wasn't quite it from Serral, but the scan runs out, and he will evacuate away once more. Again, just putting some pressure on. Now you can see that Maori wants to maybe come down the ramp and from the top left-hand side. Serral's got a lot more units in the top left corner. They're going to maybe be able to do something themselves. Looking like they're going to run for the fifth base while Maru is otherwise preoccupied. You know, Seismic Spines wasn't done there for the Lurkers, so they actually didn't have the range for most of that fight. They don't have adaptive talents yet either, meaning they're a bit slower. Yep. But Serral's still putting on a lot of pressure, man. Like, this is kind of crazy, because the army that he has here doesn't seem <laughs> big at all. Some of these Lurker shots have been massive on these Marines and Marauders, though, and Maru's supply is dropping heavily. A few links come through, and this time, I mean, this base is in trouble. These SCVs are probably not getting out of here alive. I thought those Lurkers were going to burrow a little sooner to maybe cut off the SCV retreat, but 10 still going down, and Maru's losing a very important base for himself just at a point where he needs to start rebuilding. It's not like he already has a bank ready to go. So Serral, he's not just taking a good trade, he's denying economy, and so Maru can't rebuild back off of this. Yeah, and look at this. This time, the Lurker harass coming in nice. And Maru, I think I see a little bit of a smile on his face appearing as I was like, wow, you finished, kid. Play pretty <laughs> good, man. You play pretty damn good. But yeah, this is a great game from Serral. Great game from both of them, actually, because I mean, it's really, it takes two to tango when you yeah. see somebody play so well, but Sauer really hasn't missed a beat in this game three. He really has not missed a beat, has he? He has just been on point throughout. These veins are going to come rolling through. Marine Marauder being chased away. He just can't run away fast enough. 
Karasik. Bombs are everywhere, and even the Hydras left over are chasing down this time around because they've just got the numbers to make this work. Into a Widow Minefield, well, that doesn't matter either. The Hydras are getting so many kills here. Maru's supply is gone. And Serral, this was the most convincing game of the three, and it was really Serral dominant, right? He was just so good throughout. Absolutely, and GG, Serral takes it 2-1, and that, it was a damn good series, man. Like, they both really tested each other out. We also got to see how their ZVTs and TVZs are truly looking, and I gotta say, like, if anybody had any doubt about this young man here, he, he's looking phenomenal, man. Like, this is... I, when it comes to ZVZ, I always have faith in Serral being pretty damn good. I know we can get Babu 